entrance that leads to the synth production base. It sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. Ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navia's probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system, or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist Clorend, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real disappointing. Hey! Don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly, and we have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> That case had nothing to do with him! You've got the wrong man! Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? We can put the discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh. A young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway. So I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... <laughs> Marcel, the head of Confrerie of Cabriere! Huh? What Confrerie? Never heard of them in my life. I've heard of them, but... Weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? Oh, is this going to be a friends to enemies type situation? Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial.
Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney. Is that correct? Ah, uh, apologies, sir. It all just happened so quickly. I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm... <laughs> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Confrerie of Cabriere. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guards' investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques' life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. <sighs> the one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end he reconsidered, and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility, and had sent out another assassin. This 
assassin, first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. A pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. But now, it is clear that the clothes were proof that there was a third person at the scene, and that they were turned into water after committing the murder. Since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. Ah, so that's what happened. Wait, you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the Primordial Sea has been used for all these years? What a great theory. It also explains Callus's and Jacques's respective motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navia just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Uh, then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nivellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the Primordial Sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot. 
and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking about the Serial Disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... <sighs> know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations, until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas. Who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus's patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy! At this rate, Navi will be convicted for falsely accusing him. 
I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth, while that same agency has long been taken from then. The people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. your fate.
Perhaps we need to go up, but Paimon doesn't see a way. Let's take a look around. Maybe we'll find a hidden mechanism that'll show us the way up. your fate.
Green outlines your fate. Change of plans. Witness the power. Torn to oblivion! isn't here.
Everything in progress? Ready to drink? Stock sample? Huh. They've also got all the synths pretty clearly labeled. Whoa! There's even fruit flavored synth? Yep, it's super obvious. What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the primordial sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! <coughs> Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just... that... Paimon's never read something so scary before! How can someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. So, that's why he did all of these experiments. Wait, did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Huh? Is it that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. Ah... <sighs> You mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? So that's it! Vache was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? In any case, Paimon will write it all down. almost everything here and it seems like our theories were spot on but yeah we haven't found anything that reveals his true identity no wonder even nervalette wasn't able to find anything whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago that way even if we bring all this back to the opera we won't be able to identify the true culprit Sure thing, Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either! You take that side and Paimon will take this side! Check everything carefully, we'll find something for sure! Her 
your diary. Let's see. Aw, it's just a normal diary chronicling their love story. She was so sweet, too. Oh, Paimon feels even worse for her now. So many! A whole page is worth! But they're all crossed out. Was she unhappy with all of them? The final name she decided on was... Marcel. Wait, but... Marcel's pretty old. <gasps> Has this case been going on for so long that he's Fache and Veneer's grown son? Uh, hey! Paimon still hasn't figured it out yet. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia, we're back! Uh, as expected of my partner, I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? It's all right, Monsieur Nervalet. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Veneer, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vinyar is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place. 
so I can't be dissolved, no matter what I do. Hey, is that water from the primordial sea that he's drinking? I can't dissolve, can't dissolve, can't dissolve! <laughs> do you all see? I can't go, I can't follow. So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles, only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. <laughs> the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me! Don't anybody come near me! I still need to save Vinyer! A promise! We made a promise! Vinyer! Vinyer! Please, Vinyer! Don't think badly of me! All I want to do is fulfill our promise! At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler, please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Varche, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the Primordial Sea, and was dissolved in front of Vache as a result. Vache learned of the Primordial Water's existence through the work of others, and began to kidnap young women for research, with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel, and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the Primordial Sea can induce feelings of euphoria, and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Vache decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Vache expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Vache attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, and the power of water from the Primordial Sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Vache's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Varché is guilty. Guards! Take Varché away. Good. It's what he deserves. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? Yippee! We helped Navia bring the bad guy to justice! He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? <sighs> Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. See, Papa? Spina di Rosula's still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to, so if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Ugh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. Hmm. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Tartaglia is... guilty. What?! Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? Do you think the Oratrice might have just convicted him on general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? The judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal is... By law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. <laughs> You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine, too! I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Are you 
looking at me. I had nothing to do with it! I... I don't know what happened there either. Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that? She says she has no idea either? But that's impossible. Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? Yeah, so are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results like this really be called justice? <sighs> Ahem. My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken, or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? Uh... So you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm... She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff, so he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? <laughs>
If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? This is what I call a moment of solitude. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Huh? All will be revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat.
Hey, what are you doing? Quick, stop him! Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Ah! Marcel! What are you doing over here? Stop resisting arrest! Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list! No, 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 wait! I, I just want to ask the Traveler something. I I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So, unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up. You've already been convicted. Uh, really? You, you, you did? You're sure? You met her. But how could that be? How did you manage to do it? The Fountain of Lucene? Then... Then she's been so close to me all along. And I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the Traveler take me to the Fountain to see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hmm. Paimon agrees. Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? This request, is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans. Will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that... I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. <sighs> in that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Yeah, and even Paimon could hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Oh, in that case... Vashe! Ah! Yes, that's it! So you heard it too! Vinier, it's me! It's me, Vache! Vache? Vache? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey, wait! Vinier, is that you? It's me, Vache! Vinier! Vache? Why did you come? Didn't I say? You don't need to look for me. You... You look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? It's been more than 20 years. I've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left. All this time... Only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive. Nothing else mattered to me. Oh, I must be dreaming. Who would have thought I'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this? Vignere, you are my everything. I really don't know how I could live without you. But Vache, if you ask me, 
This world would be better off without you. Uh, wh what are you saying? If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts, and my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother. And she would not have grown old and died alone, with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. It's all because of your selfishness, Vashe. It's all because of you. You... Wait, you are not Vinier. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vinier. I am... the Sacrifices. Every woman who died by your hand, as our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the Primordial Sea. Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the Primordial Sea, and we were no longer individuals. But we became one, just as streams of water come together in the sea. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azine. The only one I am not is Vignier. Why? But then, where is Vignier? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? I... um... I... You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignier's beloved. From the moment your first victim died and her consciousness merged with Vignier's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. No! Vignier! She can't hate me. Let me see her. Please, have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vignier. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because it's her final drop of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Vashe. 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 Drown. to relax. Huh. Well met, partner. I knew something great was going to happen when I woke up in such a good mood today. Even this weather can't put a damper on the demoiselle's mood. It's a pleasure to see you both again. Oh, 
Oh, now that I believe. I'm easy to work with and always bring home the bacon. Who wouldn't treasure having a partner like me? <laughs> Sounds like you're really enjoying life these days, Navia. What have you been busy with since the trial? <sighs> it's just been one thing after the other. I've been making non-stop trips between Poisson and the courts in Sen. Everyone from Spina di Rosula organized a memorial for my father. We never held a memorial when he first died, since everyone knew that even if we held one back then, no one was going to come. This time, though, everyone in Poisson, and even many people from the court all attended. Ah, so his name's definitely been cleared now. That's what we like to hear. It's been the dearest wish of Demoiselle all along. <laughs> that blasted stubborn fool. I was right to put my faith in him. I'm so glad I didn't give up on the case all those years ago. Oh, by the way, I ran into Charlotte just after I left the memorial service. Uh, well, maybe it'd be more accurate to say I knew she would be there, and there was no way she'd just let me go. Huh? So you know Charlotte too? The Charlotte? Journalist from the Steambird? Yeah, way back when I first became the president of the Spina di Rosula, she was all over me. Wouldn't take no for an answer. I believe the story was called The True Heart of Darkness, Secret Tales of the Yellow Rose. To be fair, though, it was a really flattering feature. <laughs> so, we've been on pretty good terms ever since. She was trying to lean on our friendship to get me to do an exclusive piece on the serial disappearances case. Oh, yeah. She told us about that. She's always been super interested in that case, so now... Her wishes finally come true, too! Anyway, I told her to make sure that when she writes about you guys entering the Opera House with the critical evidence, that you both sound really cool. <laughs> now that's another thing to look forward to! We trust Charlotte's skills with a pen for sure! Oh, and in other news, I also took Clarand out for a meal. Oh, are you two on better terms now? Mm. While you were investigating Vache's headquarters, Clorand gave testimony on my father's behalf. It was thanks to her that we were able to turn the tide. I wanted to thank her. I mean, <laughs> there's also no point in being awkward all the time. So we took the chance to reconcile with each other. Oh, that's great! Paimon also thought Clorand wasn't actually a bad person. It's always good to have more friends. Anyway... Now that the case has finally been solved, perhaps it will slowly begin to fade from the public consciousness. Oh, actually, there's still one last thing I need to do. What is it? I should pay a visit to my father's grave, and tell him the truth of what happened, as well as how it all ended. And on top of that, just how much people still look up to him, to this day. That includes me, too. Miss Navia. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We want to go too! We also think Callus is a really admirable person. Sure thing. I'd like you two to share the moment with me. After all, without you, there might not have been such a positive ending. And in that case, everyone, let's be off. Considering the recent weather, we'll be lucky if we can reach Poisson before dark. Yeah. You're right. It's been raining non-stop for a few days now. Huh. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, even I haven't been back here for... a long time. Huh? There's someone there already. Wait... that figure... It can't be... Hmm? Isn't that Nervalette? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Navia? Hmm. 
My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown. But still, I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. Hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillet. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. I believed that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the serial disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callis in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula. Thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh, I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my strong suits. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? Ah, so Navia and Nervalette seem to have made their peace as well. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done. <sighs> Paimon's never paid respects at someone's grave before. Uh, did Paimon anything rude there? You two. Did Miss Navia invite you to come pay your respects to her father? Mm hmm. We ran into Navia on the streets today, so we just followed her here. I see, I see. Then is there something that I can help you with? Uh. Um. Well, it's pretty hard to run into you like this since you're usually super busy. So we figured we could try to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Please feel free. 
Though outsiders, you helped us solve one of the greatest mysteries in Fontaine, and it would be my pleasure to return the favor. So, at court, the bad guys referred to that special water as water from the Primordial Sea, but what is it really? Truthfully, that name is already quite accurate. I can only surmise that Vache and his ilk only learned of its nature and existence after extensive research. There used to be a special sea on the surface of this planet. The nature of its seawater was rather different from that of the sea we know today. Most of Tevat's life forms were first born in that special sea. You could say it nurtured much of the life on this planet. Huh. So it really was where everything began. It makes sense to call it primordial, then. But today, the Primordial Sea no longer exists on the planet's surface. What Vashe discovered must have been some kind of special case, or a remnant from a truly ancient age. Huh. So that's how it is. Oh, you really know everything, Monsieur Nervalet. But if that's the case, then why would people... Uh, at least people from Fontaine dissolve in that kind of water? Indeed. Why would the Primordial Sea, which was known to engender and nurture life, suddenly reverse itself and devour life instead? To be frank, that also doesn't match my understanding of this world and its laws. There must still be some unknown secrets around the people of this land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? That the sea levels will rise and everyone will be dissolved in water, leaving Farina crying alone on her throne, but the sins of the people will be finally washed away for good? Does that appropriately summarize the version you've heard? That's right! It was Lenny that told us back then! And that about covers all the main points! Yes, up to the present, I think we reached a point where we have no choice but to confront this prophecy directly. Rumors have it that this prophecy is rooted in the last words the former Hydro Archon left to the world before she passed away. A prophecy? Of the former Hydro Archon? Wow. This is the first time that we've ever heard of it. Two parts of the prophecy have already proven correct. The rising sea levels and the ability of the people of Fontaine to be dissolved. We should be more vigilant and stay on the watch for further signs. Speaking of the prophecy, Farina has also always taken it quite seriously. Indeed, she has been collecting information and intelligence from across Tevat for this purpose. If the rumors were true, then perhaps this prophecy is the conundrum left to Farina by her predecessor. But with Farina being the way she is, can we really trust her to solve it? Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? My apologies. My investigation has still not reached its conclusion. However, I still believe the judgment of the Oratrice was not rendered arbitrarily. Huh? But you also said you thought he was innocent! For many years, I have been quite aware that the Oratrice does not simply mechanically repeat the verdict that I give on each case. As a divinely created mechanism, the people's unified faith in the concept of justice is integrated into it. Not only can it produce the incredible power of indemnitium, but it likely also possesses other traits, such as self-awareness. Which is all to say, I have been prepared for a situation like this for a long time. Huh. So when Lenny told us that he heard a human voice from the room where the Oratrice's core is stored... I was not aware such a thing had occurred. Perhaps that could serve to prove my conjecture, I will add that to the list of items to investigate. In any case, I am inclined to believe that the Oratrice does have a methodology all its own. We just do not have enough information. Based on Farina's reaction, I doubt even she had any idea what was going on. She managed to bluff her way through it, though, with her time-tested twin tricks of bravado and drama. While we do intend to get to the bottom of this, for now, we regret to say that the Fatui Harbinger just have to bide his time in the fortress of Meripede. If we did incorrectly convict him of crimes he did not commit, 
we will most certainly compensate him to the fullest extent allowed by the law. If you ask Paimon, the only compensation he'll want is a no-holds-barred fight with you. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Your sibling. Another blonde-haired traveler. I'm sorry, but I've never seen anyone who matches that description. If he ever stepped foot in Fontaine, I'm sure he followed our laws to the letter and had no reason to appear on the stage of the opera Epicles. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Very well. It was my honor to provide you with what answers I could. I very much enjoyed conversing with you. It will soon be time for me to leave this blissful tranquility behind and return to Palais Memonia. You really are super busy, Monsieur Nervalette. Paimon thought you only came here to pay your respects today because you had the day off. Crime and villainy do not have the day off, and so justice must work around the clock as well. This is merely the nature of a justice's work. All right, all right, you've got a point. Huh? Paimon just noticed that the rain has stopped. <sighs> you know, we've been walking around for a while now. Why don't we go back to the Spina di Rosula base in the court of Fontaine and have a rest? Navia said something about having a place ready for us there, didn't she? Come on! place. Good thing I asked the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Hey, what do you mean by chatty? Paimon's always careful not to talk too much. Most of the time, anyway. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nourilet wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in person. Nourilet? He wants to see us again already? Huh. We talked so much the last time we met. Has something happened since then? I am not privy to the details. It would be best if you came to the Palais Marmonia and asked Monsieur Nervillet in person. Mm, if you say so, but... Hyman has a bad feeling about this. 
Now that I've delivered the message, I'll take my leave. Thanks! We haven't left the room for a few days, so we'll head over once we've freshened up a bit. This is what I call a moment of solitude. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Now, this is what I call a moment of solitude.
your fate.
body and mind. It is as the stars foretell.
justice. to act. No, my sword! Embrace the ice! My apologies! Down. Rain outlines your fate. Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one.
What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. If you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is.
If you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one.
This realm is truly beginning to thrive. Thank you. 
If you ever ha- Astra, thank you for comp. Add Astra.
lines your face. What you say? This may hurt a little.
If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure?
just sharpen my spear. Rain, outlines your face. Huh? Oh, rain cut, just say three a little. Shall perish. Ha! Remove all obstacles. Illusion shattered. Uh. Rain outlines your fate. Huh? Oh. Minute to memory. Witness the power of Gugwa. To act. Inazuma shines eternal. Grow, grow, grow. Make yourselves at home.
There's a pleasant breeze and glorious sunshine. So Where shall we go for a walk? So this is a day in the life of the Traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time.
Body and mind. I gotta make sure the net stays away from the dish racks.
sure Lynette stays away from the dish racks. Time to act. in mind.
Time to act. Yes, I did send someone to fetch you. But as for what I'd like to discuss next... Well, I still have some reservations. Given that we've already made the trip here, you should just tell us. Bet you need us to help you with something, right? I do indeed have something I'd like to ask you to do. However, you should wait until after I tell you the details, then decide for yourselves whether you'd like to help or not. The situation is this. If I'm understanding you correctly, the Snezhnayan harbinger known as the Knave has essentially requested a diplomatic meeting with you, correct? I heard that she was originally from Fontaine, but for her to suddenly arrive here and abruptly request such a meeting like this, I sincerely advise you to refuse her invitation outright. Hmm. I'm sure you're aware that her purpose is most likely related to Child's recent predicament. We convicted one of the Snezhnayan Harbingers in a court of law, but we have yet to provide any form of detailed report on the matter. This does indeed provide an opportunity for Snezhnaya to put pressure on us. I believe we should adopt an evasive stance until we can provide a proper explanation and have a preliminary plan on how to deal with the matter. No, we shouldn't. I think we should agree to the meeting. Oh? Well, you see, we are the ones that owe an explanation. If we keep putting off the meeting, it could easily result in the problem escalating, right? It's like... like a fight between two friends. If they don't agree to see each other and talk in person, isn't it possible that the friendship could end entirely? Though diplomatic relations between Fontaine and Snezhnaya could be considered as friendly, it is only superficially so. You wouldn't go so far as to say that our nations are friends, as you did in your example. It was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? Moreover, even if we were to talk in person, if we don't have sufficient information prepared, it is quite possible the result wouldn't be restored relations, but a complete falling out. I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. <clears throat> Even if the logic of the Divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. Besides, you'll be at the meeting. If any problems do pop up, you'll have no problem navigating them. I must clarify that interacting and communicating with people outside of court is not my cup of tea. It seems you think too much of me. But more importantly, when did I agree to join the meeting with you? Uh, <laughs> you mean you won't come? No, 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 that, that won't do. I can't go to the meeting alone. You have to accompany me. I must take you with me. Lady Farina, could there be something else regarding this matter that is being kept from me? No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Fosalor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. So I only hope that justice will be served in this matter. Don't overthink it. I'll go find someone to arrange the meeting. <sighs> Though it could officially be considered a diplomatic conference, I prefer to see our meeting today as an ordinary tea party. I assume you see it the same way, Miss Farina? Hmm. Lady Farina? Uh, oh! <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Just like you said, a tea party. <laughs> I should thank you for providing the pastries. They look delectable. 
To make this tea party even more lively, I've invited someone else to join us today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Nuvillette. I was born in Fontaine, so naturally, there's no need to introduce the nation's revered Eudex to me. Hello. The pleasure is also mine. First, I would like to thank the two of you. I'm often away on business outside of Fontaine, and I'm told that the children of the House of the Hearth have been well taken care of by you. Uh... Oh, I'm not referring to when my children, Linny and Lynette, were falsely accused by you. Please don't misunderstand. The children of the House of the Hearth are often misunderstood, perhaps due to the reputation of the Fatui. There's no getting around that. All I meant to say is that Fontaine has been stable in recent years. The people are well off and the children lead happy, fulfilled lives. That is something truly worth cherishing, and no one wishes to disrupt such peace. Now then, you have come regarding the matter of child, correct? Well, yes. It appears the ever-busy Eudex Nouvellette doesn't wish to waste time with diplomatic pleasantries, and hopes that we can get straight to the point of our talk. Yes, as you surmised, understanding child's situation is indeed one of the goals of this trip. As we are both diplomats from Snezhnaya, as well as Fatui Harbingers, Child and I have always been colleagues. Were anything to happen in Fontaine, each of us would serve as the other's attorney to resolve the issue. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine, and resolve what has happened to him together. The rules governing attorneys only apply before a trial has concluded. Since a verdict has already been rendered, we see the case as settled. I apologize for being unable to grant your request. An outright refusal. Very well. I respect all the rules of Fontaine's courts, just as I respect you as Chief Justice. Okay, why don't we back up a step? You don't need to transfer Child to us. I only request to enter the Fortress of Meripede to see Child and confirm his condition. It's not like you couldn't even manage to fulfill a simple request like that. Right, Miss Farina? Uh, um, about that. The Fortress of Meripede has always been completely autonomous. Even we have no authority to interfere there, and diplomatic issues do not suffice as an excuse. However, if you absolutely must confirm the situation of the Harbinger, I have a proposal. The knave showed up already? Well, Linny did say that Father will be returning soon. We didn't even know that Lenny was from the House of the Hearth at the time, so we kind of overlooked that information.
Yes, thank you for your kind advice. I'm well aware of the situation. I also notice that Lady Farina acts a little odd and unnatural whenever I bring up matters related to the Knave. Could the Knave be... threatening Lady Farina or something? If that were the case, then why wouldn't Lady Farina inform me? And what means could the Knave possibly have to twist the arm of an Archon? Hmm... So maybe that's not very likely. Even though Farina can act a little weird at times, she's still an Archon. In reality, this problem is even more thorny than it appears. According to reports from the Fortress of Meropede, Child recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The details are still unclear. We cannot rule out an escape, but there have also been no reports of him outside of the Fortress of Meripede. Special guards oversee the fortress, and its internal systems are extensive. Combined with the special characteristics of the surrounding terrain, an escape should not be possible. I suspect that there's something else behind Child's disappearance. I was only willing to share this information with you because you are friends of Child, and it is my duty to see justice done. So this is what you wanted to see us about before? Yes. I would like you to go to the Fortress of Meropede and investigate Child's disappearance. This was my proposal during our meeting with the Knave. Rather than allowing her to intervene, I offered to send someone to find out about Child's situation and report back to her in detail. The Knave did not seem satisfied by my proposal, but she still agreed to go along with it for the time being. Her words were, We will talk more once we have that report. So that means we bought ourselves some time! Firstly, you're already acquainted with Child. Your eyes may discern relevant details there that others would miss. And secondly, is the consideration of the unique nature of the Fortress of Meripede. Isn't it just Fontaine's prison? I would not define it so crudely. The Fortress of Meripede is not affiliated with the court system of Fontaine on paper. It has always existed as an autonomous entity. Early in Fontaine's history, criminals were punished with exile, not imprisonment. Even today, sentences against convicted criminals still include exile, just as before. The Fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. All we do is dispatch guards to keep watch and help maintain security, but we have no right to get involved with any other matters. Although I do have a personal relationship with the administrator there, neither myself nor the courts have the right to be directly involved with the investigation, no matter how serious the grounds. Oh! Paimon gets it now! That's why you need us to conduct our own investigation as a third party, right? Correct. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress during your detention. This will save us a lot of unnecessary trouble. So, are you two willing to accept my proposal? You two have my sincere thanks. This matter is of critical importance to Fontaine's current situation. Also, I hope that both of you can keep this operation a secret. We will rendezvous at the Fortress of Meropede's entrance on Erinaeus once you've prepared yourselves. I will arrange for someone to take you inside. Prepared ourselves? Uh, is there something we need to prepare? Perhaps you could enjoy a good meal and have a nice bath. I'm afraid that living conditions inside the fortress are nothing like those on the outside world. All right! Even though we'll be there on trumped-up charges, we'll be in prison for real. Uh... On second thought, is it too late to back out? Mm -hmm. 
Please do not worry. Since you are sacrificing both your time and quality of life for the sake of delivering this report, you will be compensated according to the highest standards permitted to legal staff, regardless of the outcome. Now that's more like it! Come on, Traveler! Let's go eat the best meal we can find! We'll eat so much that we won't need to eat another meal for a whole month! Your treat! Are you leaving now? In that case, please take this cake as a token of my personal gratitude. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? This is what I call a moment of solitude. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me.
Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Huh? All will be revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. This is what I call a moment of solitude.
I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. Is what I call a moment of solitude. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wandwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure?
This is what I call a moment of solitude. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. what I call a moment of solitude. on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair.
If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. It 
was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. Hmm. Now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure?
<sighs> now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. in the next volume? Oh, drat. on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. My calculations are correct. Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? in the next volume? Oh, drat. Thank you. 
If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. On a deserted moonlit night, that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me.
T'was on a deserted, moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. This is what I call a moment of solitude.
I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. Revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. This is what I call a moment of solitude. My calculations are correct. Wandwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure?
It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Calculations are correct. Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me.
This is what I call a moment of solitude. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure?